Hey guys, today I wanted to go over how I use my RC202 loop station in my music making setup. A few things I want to go over is how the MIDI sync capability works and what it's useful for. There's not really a lot of videos on what it's useful for, how it exactly works other than some demos of the synth being used with it. I think the demos are actually Roland specific uh, demos where they show it from the uh, Roland studio or whatever on what they envisioned it to be used for without really much tutorial information. So I have a mini log here. It's one of my favorite synths to use just period. Um, it's the perfect synth for this. It's got a few caveats that we're gonna talk about. So let's go ahead with my setup. So on the back, I have the MIDI out going into the MIDI input on the RC202. I also have the audio out going into the left audio input because I'm not using any effects. And this is a mono output synth, not a mono synth, but it just has a mono output. There's no effects in it. It doesn't have any panning. Uh, it can't do really anything other than a mono output there. So I have a patch here, if you can hear it. It's just a standard plucked patch. It's one of my harp patches that I use quite a bit. It just sounds really nice. So we're going to go ahead and change the tempo information here to be 56. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Now, to make sure that it's synced properly, what we're going to do is go over here and click Tap Tempo. And you should see MID, which means MIDI. So the clock data is coming from the mini log. It's basically setting the clock of the RC202. It's exactly what we want. Now, by default, the mini log will send program change data anytime you change the program. So anytime you change your patch, it's going to want to change program change data over to uh, any MIDI device. That's a problem with the loop station because it's going to want to go to a different memory section and it'll lose whatever you had in the previous memory section unless you saved it to internal memory. So the way that I figured out how to do this on the mini log since the Minilog does not have the function of just disabling program change information, is to go into the edit information, go into global settings, which I have highlighted here, you just have to highlight it, click the mono button, go through and change, click, clicking mono until you get to enable TX MIDI. That means send MIDI. We want to turn that off. It's going to turn off note data out of the MIDI. It's also going to disable program change information and all the CC information from the knobs, but it won't disable MIDI clock. So that's exactly what we want. I'm also using the mini log because it has a sequencer. And the sequencer is perfect for this because then we can go ahead and make an awesome loop. So let's get started with that. Now that the TX is off, let's exit out. Let's go to the patch we want to use. And I'm going to go ahead and record a quick just uh, sequence. Okay, so that's in there. We can play it back. Sounds like that. You know, just something simple. All right, so what I like to do is I want to go ahead and start already playing this. That way this can sync properly to the beginning of the bar here. So let's do that. I'm going to wait until it comes around the second time and then start recording. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and wait until it's done and press stop recording. And now it's trying to sync it. So it synced properly. If I press play to stop the sequence, you're going to also stop the sequence on here. But let's see if this is a perfect loop. So we're going to go ahead and uh, press play. coming around now. We have a perfect loop. Fantastic. So now we can go ahead and change program information without deleting anything on here. So now I'm going to go into my next patch. The problem with my next patch is the tempo is set at a different tempo than my first patch. So you're going to send clock data and it's going to sound really funky. We, we can go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and send set this back to 56 on my first patch. We'll hear this. So I'm going to start it. Now if I go to my next patch, 
notice it's screwing up basically because it's sending the incorrect clock for what the last patch was recorded as. So I can go back down to 56 on this new patch and it'll be fine. Just keep that in mind. Uh, if you save patches on your mini log and you're going to use it with your looper, this is the same for any other synth with a sequencer that I've found that works fine with this. You're going to want to make sure that all of your patches have the same clock data, so the same tempo. So now that we have a perfect loop here, I can go ahead and layer on top of it and start making a song. So. Sounds pretty good. I mean, we just have a dry signal coming out. I usually put an effects chain before this. Um, the effects chain is a little more difficult, especially if you have a lot of reverb. You might end the song or uh, the sequence on a part where it kind of just doesn't work. So just be cognizant of that and make sure, just play around with it, um, depending on how much reverb or delay you have going, that you're going to go over on the actual uh, size of the loop and you might get a weird stop of the sound. Uh, I don't know how else to explain that. It'll just, it, it won't sound right. I mean, you'll have to experiment. So yeah, let's go ahead. I mean, I'm going to press the uh, record button again, so I'm going to be doing sound on sound looping. And you can start whenever, like I'm going to start on the uh, beginning of the bar here. other than demoing this so I don't really have a song to go with here but it's a good example of how to do this properly so yeah the, the clocking sync between your MIDI devices is awesome because then you won't have to tap tempo properly or stop this exactly at the end of the bar to make an exact loop you don't really have to worry about that too much. I mean, you can be a little off and it'll basically quantize uh, your stop and start points to what your clock is set on your sequenced gear. And like I said, I use a sequencer in whatever synth that I'm starting with so you can get a perfect loop going. I mean, I, you could manually play it as well, but this is just what I like to do. All right, I hope that helps somebody out. Again, I couldn't really find much data online about how to do it properly. It's pretty simple. Just make sure whatever synth you have does not send programmed data out of it uh, to the RC202. Otherwise, when you send that program change information, it's going to change the uh, memory slot and you'll delete whatever you had before unless you had it saved.